Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to you all. Whoever are joining us at this hour, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can see who are coming in. You're all welcome. You're all welcome. You're all welcome. Once it's 12 dot, we start with our prayer. Yeah, Friday 12. Let someone in the house pray for us as usual. Pick one. Let someone in the house pray for us. Let someone in the house pray for us. A Christian brother or a Muslim brother or sister or brother in the house. Pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another wonderful opportunity to bring us together in your presence. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you've bestowed on us through this uh, endeavors. Father, we are grateful and we thank you for our anchor who is unrelenting. Lord, we pray that you continue to bless him and continue to bless every member of this group in the name of Jesus. Lord, today we gather just to your name and to your glory, and we ask that all that we learn today will be to our benefit in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for everybody, and the deliberation of today, you will anchor for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Yes, as you are, I want to encourage us that you know, we observe the simple rule of prayer. If you want to move, if you want to ask questions, or move yourself and also ask after that, please move yourself. We want a, a silent and a peaceful you know, class today so that we can see what is happening in the market and also go back and look at our, our solo and see also you know, how we can take advantage of what we will share here today. And also, we are seeing that the NEC thing is gradually you know, opening or starting. We saw a result from uh, the two mortgage banks before now. Now we have seen uh, the one from uh, the consumer goods uh, in a uh, sector, really, before we go into that, we want to look at hard market as a point. In this just short uh, trading week for, for the week ended, uh, you know, 15th of uh, July, these three days trading, how the market has shifted uh, globally and locally, and how we see that market is going to go going to the, you know, the new week, going to the earnings season proper. We have seen that, uh, you know, we have seen in earnings trickling gradually, but whilst we're entering to the main uh, week and the week uh, that lead to the end of the month, we expect to see an you know, increased number of inflow of uh, earnings uh, to the market. How are we going to position? Should we be in the market you know, now or we have, we have entered before now? What is the right strategy to, to adopt? If you're in the market now already, what are you should, should be doing? You want to enter, is it the right time to enter? Because I will tell you that you don't see the results first before you take position, you need to enter before the results are hitting the market. We need to look at this together. As I say that, uh, you no, know, as uh, investing and uh, trading uh, has the uh, inherent of a uh, risk, also potential reward also exists for what, for designing investors or traders or players in the market that understand stock market dynamics and at the same time, each operation always allow your what, your investment objective goals and uh, stop loss, you no, know, or stock order, you know what you want to call it, you know, your entry and your exit strategy to guide you at any given time you are in the market. Don't just be carried away with the market rally or market uh, correction. Have your goal, have your objective, know why you're entering the market and also why you are exiting the market. Because when you have your entry and exit, it will guide you what to do and the sector that will help you all to achieve your goal because you have a goal that you want to achieve. That's why I said, as to speak now, you know, look at the global market, over, all over the world can see that we saw a Mr. You know, Market for the past uh, week that all ended uh, yesterday. This mistrend was a result of uh, also the economic data that we're managing. At the same time, the feelings of uh, you no know, risk, risk hike has you no know, has been uh, dominated the space you no know, because of the, the certain bank across the group jacking rate to control inflation. Despite all these uh, jack, uh, hike rates, we have not seen impact of it on uh, what on uh, inflation itself because, as we speak, the inflation that we're expressing in the, in the, the global environment sitting down here. It's not a cash push or liquidity push or uh, inflation. This cost with me. That's why I believe that as we go to the class, we want to discuss how, again, it should go about managing inflation. See the time for the two authorities, the physical and the, the monetary, to shake hands at this time to see what they can do. Because if you no know, monetary has tried to adjust rate, adjust rate, even the, the, the climate, especially the rush, um, US that have you no know, high rate more than almost three times in this small space, we can see that the economy is always there. You no, know, no. Pointing toward to recession, 
because of what? Because of rate hike. As I said earlier, that when cost of uh, no production is high, and also we are feeling cost of uh, of uh, of uh, finance or cost of fund, automatically trying to work to choke or deflate your economic what economic uh, no growth or recovery, whatever we call it. That means you need to really know exactly what you should do at this point, especially as MPC is coming uh, you know, ahead now around the 20. 25th, 26th of uh, July. We really want to understand what we are doing. That's why I said the, the global you know, uh, space uh, down here, the factor driving all this upon is the rising inflation and also expected the corporate earnings that also shape the market. We we'll know exactly what to do as numbers that are managed, the market that will the market are also mixed in nature. Because these numbers are mixed in nature, many people are already jittering. Oh, is it going to be bad? Is it going to be good? But I think this number will give us a clear direction where investors or where the market is going from this point. For that, you don't need to panic at all. But rather, watch your position and see good set of deliver value. Because I said, despite of necessities in any economy, in any market, in any environment, in any sector, there are some also opportunity to them. Then that opportunity is why we're here, so that we can rub mine together to we'll know exactly where the opportunity are in the market, so that you know exactly what to do as a you know as investor or trader. Once you're able to do this, you are good to to go and that is the, the best way to take advantage of information and knowledge of the market because we are sharing what we know here and there left and right that will help us also to improve our position back in nigeria i, I had a i had a I had a short uh, trading book that i said earlier no it missed performance and this one not let the market the market close higher compared to the previous week reversing what it's last week lost this was a result of a uh, price acquisition of uh, the telecom giant etc et no time to no reshape the market despite no losses uh, suffered by by no other high, other high price uh, stock in the market that's why there was a kind of a pullback in those prices and that a lot of uh, no the life of uh, the dangote cement uh, a seller for uh, profit taking that stock that pull back so happen in a cement what food fixing and it has Price adjustment for, for corporate uh, action of uh, cash and street dividend that was given to you know, investors for financial year ended uh, 2021. These are the factors that pulled the market down for, yesterday, for the week under review this two days. So, as we speak, the oscillation to the market for the past week, the past week, the past week, the market for the past week as, as a result of uh, factors like this. This is the of factor that follow also have uh, the market in the up and down movement we have seen so far. And it is from you know, the rising inflation, as mentioned earlier, you no know, high you no know, rate hike, also you no know, improved you no know, fixed income uh, E as also a threat to the market, also that factors you no know, oscillating oil price in the international market. At the same time, also back here, our economic data are not really you no know, interesting, they are not really positive as we speak now. Why I said so we look at what has happened you no know, in the last uh, so quarters looking at different economic uh, indicators or macroeconomic indicators that, that hit the market. We look at our what we call a potential major index for the month of June. You no, know, it dropped from 50, 53 point you no know, nine in, in in May to 50 point nine. You can see that's a sign of what contraction already was seen in the economy from this data. Also, if you go to inflation, also look at inflation. You know, as a consumer price index has also uh, rise from you no know, 17.71 to hit. No, 18.60, which beat my focus. No, I told you, you no, know, we were expected to see around the 18.5. Now, that, that means you can see that within this period, you no know, price has increased just on a quarter, on a month to month basis. For the month of May, we saw a jump of almost uh, you know, 89, 89 points. The same thing has also repeated itself in the month of June, 89 points. These are what you should look at. If we look at our GDP too, GDP dropped from um, you know, 30. Point, uh, 3.89 in the last quarter of 2021 to 3.11% for first quarter today. This is a sign of uh, contraction. And that is why, as we're looking forward to see the MPC coming next week, I see how you know, the, the, the committee is to vote because it is time for you to kind of deflate what we're seeing because all that you know, climate that have really hiked their rate consistently for almost three times, we have not seen a better number. That's why the food were labor data that came from US, others are not looking good. But I believe that China, that even the economy is a bit uh, slow, kind of uh, no slow down their growth, but they left their work, their rate unchanged. Look also in Japan, 
not only just EU uh, and CBU also with the Europe uh, Bank is trying to hike their rate just with, uh, with five points in the in the in the next uh, next week. These are the things we should look at. Can we see continue to hike our rate? If we want to stay stay uh, back, is it the time for us to look at what are I not increasing the rate above uh, no thirteen uh, percent because we are moving from eleven point five to thirteen, almost with the one hundred fifty uh, basic point increment. We are going to continue to increase it from uh, thirteen point uh, thirteen uh, five zero. And these are the things we really want to also consider when we are taking addition. And also we are seeing the inflation right uh, moving above you no know, eighteen, almost to eighteen point six. What sector, which industry is likely to, to for us to have a return above this inflation? As we speak now. If you look at the equity market, where you no know, you and I play, that only where we are seeing that yet to date, you know, that's why that it's few stocks that have supported the market. We can see that we are seeing return above uh, 18 point six percent from the market. Why individual stocks have given us 50 on 40 percent, 100 in you no know, in some cases. That is why which sector should be positioning uh, as we go into what into the you no know, main uh, uh, Q3 uh, quarter or third quarter position. These are the things we also will be discussing. As we go along, and don't forget that the Australian oil price has also supported. You no, know, I've not helped my language that language because as it goes up and down, yes, when oil is up, you know how it plays on our market. Our market look up in that direction, but because it's oscillating now, people are looking at you know, sitting on the on the sideline to see what result will look like where oil price will go from now. Because if uh, oil price has gone back to pre invasion or pre you no know, Ukraine uh, price uh, war. Prices of commodities are still remain up. That's why oil price has gone. That means it is not only the oil price has pushed what, what was seen as a inflation as high price, of course, it's also distortion around the energy, around commodity, all these are affected. And also, as far as the war in Ukraine is still, but it's still ongoing, I tell you this how you no know, we've seen oscillation. But there's a focus from you no know, big banks and across the group that oil is going to bounce back to 20 uh, 200 uh, you know, dollars. If that happens, that will be a benefit for us as a nation. But even the one we are seeing, because we are not producing up to the required uh, you know, amount or quantity, we are not benefiting much. We only hearing that oil price are broken, that has it reflected on our you know, external you know, reserve, has it reflected on Nigeria. But sectors that are put in that sector, uh, in that uh, you know, sector of the, of the economy, there's a way for you and I as an investor to benefit from it because most companies of private sector are more prudent than look at government. That there are some companies taking advantage of the high price of crude oil, also, and other sectors, other agrarian sector, other you know, industry where we see that things are still working you know, positively for them. That is where we should go so that as earnings are hitting the market, we know exactly what to do with these uh, earnings. Because I tell you, all the pullbacks we are seeing also is supposed to send this kind of uh, confusion you know, in some people that don't understand the market, not knowing that when the market is pulling back. You no, know, it creates opportunity for people to take advantage of Cuba because some stocks also will go come up there a spike in price movement. Why? Because those uh, individuals are seeing you no know, kind of uh, in a, a positive sentiment for that you know, individual stock or sector that will see a spike in them. That's why you also, as a trader or investor, you need to understand how to combine your technical and fundamental analysis together. And don't forget that in all my classes, I will tell you one, you know how to combine these two factors together. You are good to go because it will help you to take informed investment uh, decision. But as we speak now, before we go to look at uh, the fundamentals that came yesterday, especially the you know, Unilever, we want to look at what has happened all this while. I want to quickly go back to the the chart now before I come back to that uh, you no know, uh, um, Unilever because I want to show you something about in the last between the uh, 27 and uh, 2007. Sorry, 2007 and 2022, want to see how MP, uh, MPR or interest rate has moved and how market also in that space has performed. Especially, let's look at the last five years because I tell you that you want to really look at the market, you need to look at the, the, the recent years instead of looking forward. Look at what has happened in the last five years, looking at the you know, OSHA index and some indicators. When you want to look at inflation, to look at uh, also the interest rate, which is the MPR. We want to know what has happened, it was the lowest and the highest, and where we are today. And what we expect going forward from this uh, from this uh, market, if it's time for us to start you know, taking good position in some stock, time for it to also look at. Let me hold cash. We we'll know after looking at these uh, indicators that we want to share now. Let me quickly take you to that. Uh, no, let's go to that uh, side of our discussion. Let me quickly follow. Yeah, I can follow this 
Yes. If you here were looking at the chart, this is also a daily chart. You can see on the daily chart, as what happened yesterday, we saw that the market has bounced back above the T line. For all this period, market has you know, to trade below the T line. You can see it here you now down. But yesterday, at the end of the uh, you know, transaction yesterday, even when uh, you no know, language went, recorded some losses and at a 10% of can see the impact on the market. That's why I tell you that. You no, know, the seven stocks that control the index are this uh, company that we're looking at now, the MCA, the MCN, the ETA, and also the Dangote. But despite there was a pullback in Dangote yesterday, because of the impact of uh, ETA being the, the most capitalized you know, stock on the market, gaining 10%, it kept the market in green. And that's why that if you want to take position, this is not enough for you to take position. You look at you know, sectoral index at the same time, what is happening in the sector to guide you exactly to know what to do. And also opportunity for when you see a leader in any sector pulling back, you no, know, it's opportunity for you to look at that stock. That's why I said pull back at times might confuse some you no know, novice investor, but for those that understand how to play the market, pull back, especially for those that uh, you no know, leaders in the sector where they operate or in those where they are, they pull back opportunity, especially when the fundamental of that company is, is intact. And also we are seeing also improve momentum, especially as any city is coming, you need to position before the number side in the market. Because if the number comes, no, it beat expectation, fine. It beat expectation. Actually, that's why your stop loss is very, very active when you are taking it because you know exactly where the price will touch, you will see that position. That's why before you enter, these are the things you put in place as you are buying. Like I always say last time that if you're entering a bus, you know your, the bus stop when you're going to stop. Once you're entering a stop, you know the price that you also exit and take your profit. Like I said, that you know, the same market that will give you profit, the market also, you know, prepare. You know, of the, of the profit, taking it from, from you. That's why you need to know exactly when you supposed to be in those uh, positions and also exactly when to exit. Don't allow the market to take you up and also bring you down. That's why I said, don't fall in love in, you know, in up market, especially when you set your goal, let your goal guide you so that exactly you know what to do at that particular time. It's very, very important when it comes to equity trading. On this uh, daily chart, I'm just explaining the position now. The market has you know, come back you know, to above the T-line Crossing the 52,000 market. If you remember, I've said it several times that once market break this point again, and all time is another rally, but we want to see the sustainability of this uh, trend. But for me, the sustainability of the trend will be is a bit high. Why I said so, the few foreign investors in the market that really want to you know, want to go out, you know, since uh, you no know, FS uh, market is not uh, friendly for them, most of them will also want to buy this ether so they can couple it here and go and sell in London where it's also listed and take their pounds there and move away. For those, that also can do other similar things for other stuff. But the good thing is that because we have less participants of the foreign uh, uh, players, that's why our market is a bit stable. And but with the help of all these high cap stuff, as they're going up, they're also going to draw some stocks up. Even those you know, leaders or those that have good fundamentals that are pulling back, once the market remains an uptrend, naturally those stocks will go up. As our market remains the best in Africa, I'll tell you, it's only during the, uh, the, the political environment that many people will also be with them, you know, afraid of. But I believe that so far we have seen the way it's moving. I think this is a, a kind of a, a political environment that we've seen that there will be a lot of uh, things that will happen, but not to our own uh, no detriment, it's for the good of the economy and also good for all of us. If we're able to make it right this time, no matter who comes from any party, the, 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 the Labour Party, the PDP, the APC, the all friendly of the market with their policies for that. I think for capital market, after the election, we also see a rally that was also support what we seen. But with respect towards the end of the year, like I was saying, there must be a little you know, up and down because of what that is the closer to, to the to the to the to the exercise the you know, the pool coming in February. But I believe that what we are seeing the market, the market is seeing other on the long run. If you look at it, this trend here on a daily chart, you can see that on the long run the market is still strong. But you can see on a weekly or daily chart there's correction. But as of yesterday, you can see that the, even the weeks that market have lost with this trend, they don't cover some uh, weeks, but and the market has a trend for this period before you no know, breaking out from the consolidation level to break out that 2000, which I have said earlier, to, you know, to usher in another uptrend. For me, there's no cause for alarm in the market now. The market remains on, on a strong you know, direction, but it's for you as an individual to know the kind of stock you are playing and the sector where you have also positioned ahead of what the numbers. Quick one, I want to turn this chart now to a weekly chart because we are still on a weekly chart. Uh, that we know exactly what we are doing in the market. The chart will help us to know exactly what is happening. As you can see here, I guess you are seeing from there. You can see that the chart here also is also almost the same thing with the daily chart actually, but above also the, the T line. 
No, the T line for me is a good one. But if you come down here and look at these indicators here, these are monitoring indicators. That's why I complete that. So you know, that's why the, the green line is still out of that on a weekly chart, the market is very, very strong. But on a daily chart, market has always crossed positive from the red, green one, crossing the red one. Let me quickly show you here so that you can see what I'm saying for you to understand. You see this point here. The market has been weak all this while, even all this growth. But as we speak now, you can see the kind of uh, uptrend here that the green one has crossed the red one of the sign of a bridge trend. That is why you can see this stronger movement here that also supported this crossover, which is good. And if you come back here and look at your ADS, ADS is leading 22. And ADS points above 20, the sign of strength for me is a good one. And you can see your MACD is also trying to confirm and open. Once you also break out here to the same thing here, and uptrend also have been also. You know, observe for me, it's a good one for, for the market. There's no cause for alarm for us to panic at all, or rather, save your position and watch. Like I said, if you chart it, look at all those sectors, you no know, uh, indexes I will chart before you can conclude on what to do. There's no cause for alarm. Yes, we want to look, go back and see the number that also emanated from from, uh, from the from Unilever. Let's look at the number together. I have looked at it you now on my own. I want to look at share the number now, but before the let me call this will be the final one we'll be discussing before we go into question and answer. Yeah, this is for the HP dividend, which I know we've shared it and even at the beginning of uh, last month, but already now while the, the any season we need to, to have a refresh on it. But for, for me. Want to look at the Unilever result that hit the market? I will tell you that number from Unilever, as we speak, is very, very for me the miss number that was below expectation. Yes, they, they are still on a on a recovering directly on a six months uh, number, but for the for the last you no know, three months, which is April to June, I will tell you the number there was not too attractive. And this can I see the impact of what cost or no on this uh, operations of these companies on the exchange. But if we look at the the six months result, yes, there's a little improvement. Fine, it shows that there is hope for the company. So that means if you are in that you in Unilever, I will tell you that it is not time for you to panic, especially if you're a long term investor. But for we traders, yes, we look at the momentum as from Monday, how the market is going to react to the result. But on the long run, the sign that if cost of production starts also you know, subsiding and start you know, slowing down, we might see a better number for this kind of sector and also this company because it does the cost have also impacted them negatively for April to what to June. I will see from the figure I have here now, which I want to share with you. I know we have helped already. The revenue moved from a 16.34 billion to 23.5 billion, representing 42.3 percent up, which is good. The PAT also maintained that uh, direction, but on a decline because the asset is a missed number. No, it dropped from 1.21 billion to 110.37 million, representing 90.91 percent down for the quarter for the three months, which is uh, for that. Uh, no, April to April to to June for this period, and the EPS also dropped from 21 Kobo for that period to two Kobo, and also um, profit margin, which is very important, dropped from 7.41% to 0.47%. Can see that this is a real that you no know, these sectors you know are struggling. Right? Remember, that's one thing when we we're analyzing a uh, lot that came from uh, Flower May, Honeywell, that you no know, the top line were very attractive, but the bottom line was what was very thin. Because of what in between the uh, the top line and the bottom line, there was kind of an uh, increase in cost, and that also eat up their profit at the end of the day. But I would say that for me, on this uh, increase in cost uh, was also noticed in, uh, and they also you know, included in cost of uh, finance, the cost of uh, tasks, you know, all this also eat up their 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 numbers or their you know, commerce to bring this level. But if you come down to look at their six months. We know that we are looking for half year results. And half year results are important as, as uh, important as also as the, as the Q Q3 because Q2 will give you an insight what also you should expect from the from the company. If you look at the six months results from this company, yes, beautiful, good, but because we have seen the impact of increase in cost on the on the on the you no know, the, the last more quarter, which is the equipment. And let's see how the Q3 is going to look like. If there's a change, we'll see. But this is an insight for us as investors to know how that position has helped, which sector is going to be hit. But also, in all this, if this company is also importing uh, raw material, we should also give you an insight because if they have done backward integration, you should know that, yes, also they have a foreign, uh, foreign market because most of their products are also moving out to the neighboring country. As I can see, a stronger uh, top line 
because they are making sales for the cost of sales it's also what is getting known into their you know, profit you need to understand this which company in nigeria also in this sector that will believe are going back on even when the cost of sales is there because they're not going down so if you're importing your raw material the fact that you are importing high cost and inflation to, to the company that also will affect your, your price but most of them can see that their top line was up for this one and also for the, the mortgage company was so positive well you no know, numbers up and down but for this first uh, Consumer goods were seen a misnomer already because of what impact of cost. And also, despite that their, their product is what we need, I will tell you that you know, if the price of this product to a level go beyond some uh, you know, some buyers, they also like to drop because no substitute of this company product are there. You need to look at all this when you're also taking your investment decision. But for the uh, six months the result, very fantastic. We move from 32.41 billion to 43.81 billion, yeah. representing 35.17, which is 35.2 percent of good. Also, the PAT moved from 714.78 million to 1.91 no, billion, representing 168 percent of This is good. This is good. But you can see the, this month, the performance in Q1 has also helped no, to, no, to push in the effect of the cost that was seen a better number. But at the end of the day, if you look at also the profit margin, you know that cost is not smiling on them because costs are uh, costs are high. Cost of fund is also because increase in rate, even though it was done even you know before the, the quarter end around April, around May. Sorry, you can see that how it has also played out. The place of going to the you no know, the third, uh, third quarter, where you no know, if there's another hike again, you no know, from MPC meeting. If there's not, we might start this quarter also might be a bit better. But let's see how it was. Cost of fund from this uh, operation of this company it was you known very very high because cost of uh, finance. I mean, sorry. If you look at the EPS, EPS moved from 12 Kobo to 33 Kobo. Good, fine, you know, for the company at the end of that means and with this number, if all things being equal, we are projecting that at the end of the day, we might see between uh, 70 Kobo to 80 Kobo. That was so in place, they are figured out. Right, it depends. Then the, P, uh, the profit margin, which is the you know, PM, they have moved from 2.19% uh, uh, to 4.36. Uh, There's a little improvement in, the, in their profit margin. But if you look at the cost for this product, final uh, financial cost, let me do that with language. We move from 45.7 million to 680, 628.6 million. You can see the margin from 40, no, 45.5 million to 628.6 million. You can see demand within that uh, period of uh, six months, the cost of finance has increased, the cost of adjustment here. Also, their cost, uh, their finance income also dropped within the same period. Because of what, because of one thing or the other. But also, if you look at the task they paid within the period, task also moved from, uh, you know, their task also moved from, uh, because the previous year where they were struggling, the task was not much, but around uh, that 3.3 uh, 3, 3 million to about 1.24 billion. All this also affected their bottom line. But I believe for me, the, the performance of this company is still missed, but they still hope because we we'll see no light at the end of the tunnel if they maintain this uh, strategy of uh, this uh, at the three Kobo, at the end of the day, we're going to give us, you know, 70 Kobo or between 25 Kobo to 80 Kobo, evident of, uh, no, around that people will get my from. But capital appreciation in terms of return has created for this uh, market all this period because of the performance of the product, price has moved from as low as 11 to what it is now in the market. But for me, for those that have made profit, also you can quickly also know what to do, whether you say have to watch, to go to another stock and come back later. These are the things we also consider looking at this uh, fundamental. But at the end of the day, we want to quickly look at the 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 the, the, the technical analysis, which will come up from you know, next week when markets react to this number. Because market didn't react much to this number at the end of when it was released yesterday, but almost towards the end of the market before the result came. But from next week, we see the reaction. That will be another full trading week. That will show go to chart to see what the market is also doing. And that's why the live class that we do every day. I will encourage everyone of us in the house to always try and be in that class so that you can see the life position of these uh, stocks and what they are doing life in terms of uh, sentiment and the psychology of investors you know, for those uh, you know, individual stocks. You know how to go and to speak now. Yes, I will say thank you at this point and also expect your question. And also, if you want to add to the you know, analysis of uh, Unilever or market updates, you are free to also to add. Hello, house. Well, good afternoon. Hello, Bruce. We can hear you. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah. Addition to the market review and also the analysis of a uh, Unilever, you know, addition or question that's that good to go. Hello. Hello, sir. 
Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Ambrose. How are you? Yeah, so I'm just trying to look at this. You, I mean, we are talking about uh, the price of crude oil okay. and the way it's going to have uh, impact on the market and like uh, the positive impact on the market. But we all know that the higher the price goes, uh, the higher the price of crude oil goes in the market, it affects Nigeria in terms of the cost, uh, the pump price, of course, because the landing cost is going to be high. And the consequences of that would be, you know, that will strain the purchasing power of people. So, and we know the ripple effects would be, you know, People will only be having money to just live the day-to-day -day life. Even to invest is going to be a problem. So how do you translate that into the market? Hmm? Okay. So to balance it now, you know, uh, when we talk of uh, high oil prices, I said the plus for Nigeria if we produce our capacity, our you know our reserve will be more up for us to manage our FS demand for FS here and there, and also. If now we are looking to see that, according to CBN and also the Nigerian government, if the if uh, if the uh, refinery take off the moment from now or before the end of the year, and we are not importing uh, uh, crude oil again, and also for the refinery and we are buying from Dagote with Naira, I think the pressure will come down. The price, the pump price, might relatively remain stable because we are not importing again. So we are not relating with what is happening international price because we are, we are buying in in, uh, in Naira here from him. Yes, we might have influence because we are producing the crude oil here. We are going to also sell to him at a price that he himself also get because he's also a businessman. But I believe if we are refining here, it will not have much impact on our economy. But for those uh, our companies here that are in oil sector, especially you know, the life of uh, you know, uh, life of uh, you know, uh, Wando, you know that they are not uh, the right direction because of their you know, they are not transparent. The life of Tesla. Now we are seeing uh, you no know, uh, what's it called? Adova trying to go into oil field. No, what was trans trans the oil business, no related to what they are doing. Those oil companies are here that are that because these are privately run companies, they are not as you know, they don't have like put it, they are not as wasteful as government, they know what they are doing and they're able to manage and also make them because the price of crude oil they are exported is high and they're making money. It's going to impact on the bottom line, create wealth for investors that are in that sector on those companies. That is what I mean from the market. But in terms of uh, anywhere that the up market, up uh, oil is up in Nigeria. I take our history in my market. When oil price is doing well, our market is doing well. Not because it's been rising now, and the cost of course here because if price is going up, landing cost will increase. We agree, but also the local, the local marketers here too that are in that industry. Even when we are adjusting the price, before we adjust the price, most of them has this, this, uh, this, uh, you no know, uh, inventory or this goods and on on that ground. Even when you high price, it's a plus for them. It's something that we look at. Even when this all this are all this are like we just said, the economy there might be little, you no know, kind of uh, downturn demand will come because of high cost of living. But those that are investing, there are some companies that they see the posting positive number. That number is all going to you know impact on their price. And if you are investing that sector, no matter how small you are investing there, because you no know, price feed on any and still coming, even when the economy is as I said earlier that despite the uncertainty in the economy on any sector, there's still opportunity. That is how to take advantage of the market. That's why I mean that market also is a little indicator. Well, it was, uh, so the chart I showed you earlier, you no, know, that about three years, you know, 2014, 2015, market was down. It's a sign that yes, a little indicator that shows that market is about to come because we have not seen the Nigerian market down for straight three years. All now we've seen market up for almost uh, three, uh, three years now, but we can see that market before now has been up for almost five years in the past. For me, I see that what is happening in the market is for us as investor analysts to look at the data to take advantage of the market. That is what I see. Yes, as crude price is going up, we have a wealth affecting everything, but I believe that once the Ukraine and the Russia no issue were able to sort, I know that on the long, on the short run, it might not be easy. That's why they, they, they stop the world today to build it. But if commodities also living there were seen, uh, no oil is coming out uh, from Russia and Ukraine, that also reduced price as they go. But don't forget that before the Ukraine war, oil is almost around 100 naira, you know, around 90 to none. That is the price is selling now. We have not seen impact much more on the price of commodity. We believe that once things stabilize, we might see improvement. But I believe that right now and end of the year, let's see how it plays out. Okay, good. <clears throat> but, and again, is there any tendency you can see? Can the market ever rise up to the 20, 2004, 2005 of almost 60 trillion? Yeah. Yes. No, that, that, that's the 2000 and the, 
The market is like yeah. it because the stores that are moving the market are high cap stores that are their prices are high as they move. And see what happened yesterday. If Tesla and also that they touch 100 and uh, 300 and above, Tesla also hit the same uh, one one thousand nine hundred that was seen in uh, at the, the market won't go beyond that. The possibility is very high. But the good thing that as they are going up, they're going to drag of stock up, but it's not overnight. <laughs> it will go up and down. That's why when market took back, it gather enough sense to go up again. As now we see a breakout again at 52. Let's see how it's going to do again. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Any addition to, to this question or you want to add to market discussion or any other question in the market? Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Ambrose. Good afternoon, Mr. Ambrose. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? Very fine, sir. Good day, sir. Yeah. Please, um, just want to take a look at um some few stock. Okay. I'm team Resta. Okay. Me and Baker. Yeah. Then fixing. Yeah. I will start with the, the healthcare company. Like Stalin Bank, sorry, Stalin Banks, Stalin Bank. Okay. For, for, me and Baker, for me and Baker, I'm fixing. I don't see any problem there in that industry. Their price will be oscillating, but if you are there, you know why you are there, but your stop loss will also guide you. You know your entry point and entry point. This sector potential will have positive sentiment or positive and fundamental news for that industry. For me, I believe that if you are there, don't panic. Unit price have not moved. So I believe that at the market or rally up, there are some stores that we know market will drag up naturally. And these stores are the ones that follow. What we saw in fixing a few days, the one fixing was adjusted, we saw the pullback. Also, when um, when uh, me and Baker was also adjusted, we saw the pullback. But that, me and Baker has come back to four naira to stabilize. Mm -hmm. seen also after yesterday, we saw a rebound in the in fixing in the morning or uh, the afternoon when the market was gone. But later, it was still down because of profit taking. That should not send any panic. We still bounce back. Similarly, if the number we're expecting from fixing or me and Baker also be the expectation, that also helped them to go up. There is no cause. But for, for, um, for Sterling Bank, for some big IBTC, some IBTC, I said it earlier and several that this is a bank that, you know, in the nature of their price movement, they are defensive and these are supported their price because of their, their holding structure. But don't forget that some of these are three dividend paying company, and when their numbers are good, you see them paying more. That's why you see their payout in terms of entry dividend and full year are not considerably up or considerably down. They pay as the, the, the earnings of the company comes. And why do they pay that? It's because of all the, the high percentage of uh, the foreign investors that are in the, in the bank. For me, if you want, if you are in time, you can see that it has stabilized around the not 33, 32. Or anything, don't wait to see this bank if you are there. There's no cause for alarm for if you are in this uh, talk you have mentioned. No, big thing, no, me and Baker and the some big IBTC. Sorry, I, I mean Stalin, Stalin Bank. I saw that the volume recently is more. I say, is Stalin Bank the new fidelity of last year? Um, Stalin Bank, until we see the actual uh, for me, we are seeing volume, but we have not seen the number uh, price moving that uh, with the volume. If price is moving the volume, we'll say there's something now, but let's see the earnings. If earnings confirm positive, then that means that volume will lead to price movement. As we speak now, volume is there, but price is not responding to that volume. That's why we're waiting to see the earnings. Hello, Ambrose. Yeah. Hello, Ambrose. Hello, Ambrose. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, but I'll need to, I want to, first, first of all, uh, make a request that the daily, um, meeting that you do maybe you'll be sending us the link for some people that will not be able to join at that hour because okay well at times i might have time to join at times i might not have time to join i don't really know how to catch up if you have a recording for that please just look into that then the second one i want to yeah, say there is that after uh, the class in the evening that means you're not putting us we share the recording even after the class when market has closed yeah Okay, and maybe I will have to start looking out properly in that in that regard. Then, uh, secondly, um, the Ukraine, the Russia and Ukraine war, the report what I read recently has is not really too good, okay. because uh, I was even thinking that okay, it's something that they can you know 
strike a balance as quickly as possible. But some of the reports I've been reading, um, it's not like that. In fact, we're not even seeing that we're ending this year from some of the reports I've read because people are benefiting from it. America is benefiting from it and Russia is benefiting from it. Why countries' currencies are actually going down? Russian currency is, is improving. Go and look at it. Go and look at their, their ripples. Before the war, it was about 80. Now it's about 53. So they are making money from the high price of crude oil because they are still selling oil. America is making money because they are selling arms. So they will not, Russia will not want the war to end. America will not want the war to end. Unfortunately, Ukraine suffers for that and it's affecting the world. Now, another one of the things, the, the concern I have there is that the thing is like the report I call it concerning IMF. Nigeria is happened to be among the third countries that the economy is shaking. We also what happened that in that area of uh, Sri Lanka. So somebody asked a question about sales of crude oil. Nigerian government is not making money. NNPC has not paid any money into government's account. But rather we're using it to do subsidy because they are low, stealing of crude oil. About 9 million liter uh, barrels of oil is going out in Nigeria without no account for it. So now the issue there is that these things are now affecting the Nigerian purchasing power. And you like what we see now, look at the uh, liver union liver now. Even my organization now, we are, power is not even there. So you are buying this. And independent market are telling us that the diesel is going to 1,500 liter per liter. And companies have to go into production. So Ambus, I really want you to share light in this one because I just read a report now that manufacturing companies want to shut down because of high cost of production. We are seeing that they are making money, but it's not translating to profit after tax. Because at the end of the day, you just made an analysis now, finance cost is high and all that. By the time there's nothing left, what is the person not having to invest? Like the other person asked the question. So I, I, I don't know, I'm just thinking that maybe I would still want you to touch on those things because it's only when you have something to invest that you invest and get returns on investment. Yeah. So please, I don't know if you can see through more light into this thing because um, you look up things there, it's not really looking good. And looking at our foreign exchange, uh, all this thing, we are not even getting foreign exchange. It's even scarce in the market. If you want to go and buy dollar now, you go there, you don't even have. CBN do not have to give. And even the black market is not even having the large quantity. And companies that are depending on international products as in raw materials, they're not even having money to buy those things. So I'm Hello, good morning, sir. Yeah, yeah. Let me, Hello, let good me. morning, Ms. Ambrose. Okay, I want, to, I want to answer. Okay, go ahead. I wanted to. Yes, sir, let me ask, uh, answer what uh, my, the fellow person, the president of your spoke with said. Okay. So, what do you want, Mr. Ambrose, to tell you again? Do you want Mr. Ambrose to do magic now? No, <laughs> the problem of Nigeria is a problem that is well known to every person. Nigeria has a pathological problem. It's a problem that all of us know, but we cannot solve it. So if Ambrose, what do, what do we want Ambrose to say now? That Ambrose should go out and vote good leadership into government? It's a problem that we are aware as Nigerians, that, and we are not able to solve. Ah, please, Ambrose is not the one that you should give us this, this, uh, the answer. Please help me to listen to what Mr. Peter will be saying. Just listen to what he's saying. Is the man, is he saying, is he talking sense? Listen to what he's saying dispassionately, whether he's making sense or it's not making sense. We have a population of 200 million people. Hello, Mr. Ambrose. This, we are changing this into a campaign. No, that's it's not a campaign. I, I it's not a campaign. That is what we do. Don't shut down people. Don't shut down people. It's not a campaign. He said, Mr. Okay. Ambrose. It's not the uh, political answer. It's not, camp, it's not a campaign. Please, let, let there be decorum in the air. Not a campaign. Hello, hello. Nothing about what is a country. Not a campaign. Don't shut down people. Hello, hello. Let there be decorum in the house. Let there be decorum in the house. Hello, hello. Hello. Let there be decorum in the house. Let there be decorum in the house. Excuse me, sir. Go ahead. We are with you. We are with you. We are with you. On this, on this platform, this platform is an education, is a platform for education. Yes. And the, all of us, we are talking economics. Yeah. And there is no way you can separate politics from economics yeah. completely. Yeah, I think we should go ahead. The, the Ogade says that Ambrose will tell us what is happening. 
People that are investing, they cannot get anything out of investment because of what is happening. And you want to shut down some, somebody that is his politics? I said, listen to what Mr. Obi is saying. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. The cost of production, cost of production, Nigeria is the country that has the highest cost of, according to elementary economics, when you have much population, when you are producing in mass, the cost of production per unit is supposed cost to come down. Cost of production should reduce. Should why, reduce. Is it, why is it the one of Nigeria? <laughs> why? Mm -hmm. According to elementary <laughs> cost, uh, cost accounting. Mm -hmm. well, I agree with so, you. No, so, agree with so, <laughs> the, according to elementary cost and management accounting, as you are producing for mass market, your yeah. cost is supposed to come down. Yeah. And Nigeria has a mass market. Why is our own cost of production going on up? Okay. Going to the uh, going to the, the oil sector, they say in Nigeria, Nigeria is a country that has the highest cost of production per, per is it per liter or per, per barrel? What is going on? So, sir, unless we get our policies right, the cost of production will continue to go up. People will continue to close down industry. People will continue to relocate. Let's get our policies right. Let's elect a leader that will help us. Let's listen to Peter Obi. Peter Obi, what he's saying, I've never had any politician saying what he's saying. Listen to him. I've never had anybody okay, Ambrose, this is what he's saying. Uh, saying. Uh, saying what he's saying. Ambrose, why do I like this? I love them. No, no, no. 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 Unless, no, no. Hello. unless we get... Hello. Hello. Hello, I differ. I differ. Ambrose, I differ. Hello, Hello Mr. Ambrose. I differ, Hello, Mr. Ambrose. Hello, let me Hello. 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 Let me just Hello. 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 But it's an execution problem. Yes, we are talking about Mr. Obi. He might be saying something good. But when it comes to power, if it, if it comes there, it's the preparation that matters, not what you are saying. Because doing is not from saying. That's for people, no, don't be carried away with what you are hearing. We want people that yeah. will, but you talk less, you, you talk less, you do more. I think that's what we want in Nigeria. Not even talking much and come there, you deliver less. We know where Obi is coming, we know what he has done in Anambra. But here is not for politics. Here is purely for investment education. But when I talk about education, to come put uh, policies aside from economy, the two go paru pasu, you know, because it's then that make policy that will drive the economy. So for the right people making the policy that drive the economy will get the result at the end of the day. But this platform is not for you to you know, promote anybody. That's why I don't allow you to promote any political party here, but rather let's share knowledge that will impact our bottom line at the end of the day. That's why this forum is meant for. Thank you, sir, for your contribution. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Ambrose, for that submission. Thank you, Mr. Ambrose, for that submission. I think Mr. Ambrose has spoken well, and I think we all need to we all need to just read in between the line and see how we can we can we can you know we can make our investment better. Thank you, Mr. Ambrose. Thank you very much, Mr. Hello. Asmon, you want to talk something? Okay. Hello. Hello, sir. Okay, go ahead. Good afternoon, Mr. Ambrose. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, well. Economics and politics work together, but this is not a, a political arena. So we will not accept uh, talking about politics here. Because the, the problem of Nigeria is with all of us. The only one person, if you become anything, can you change the system? That is one. Because you have other people, layers of people who are not trustworthy. The NPC uh, managing director doesn't know, doesn't go down to the to the middle line to know what is really going on. But some of the workers, we workers too, we've contributed to the problem of this country without implementing what is required. When you see somebody stealing, you don't talk. Talk. When you talk. Talk. Some people will be guiding you, those who have vested interest. So let us discuss our uh, yeah. economy. Let's, let me answer and, the uh, Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Let me answer the question, uh, Mr. No, the last one I asked about the economy and all the stuff. 
like I said, no, no magic for Nigeria to turn around tomorrow. But we believe that yes. when things start improving, I'll start seeing the changes globally. We have a world for you know impacting us. For example, okay. now we're having a G20 coming and they're emphasizing that the negotiation for you know, for Ukraine, for Russia to allow the uh, Ukraine uh, commodity to leave port. If that happens, you no, know, we might see surprise in price of uh, commodities fine. Also, if you look at a report that came from uh, no agriculture uh, that data on worldwide as at last week that even there's such any moderation in price of uh, goods, who to know. And also, if our own policy here, our local economy might just also look at our policy, not just copying property, what other uh, you know, climates are doing, also think that going to suit us fine. You can see that our market is going opposite what is happening globally. Is it because of our economy managers? No. It's because of how the market is and also the perception of people that are playing the market. It's because the market is <coughs> by you know, local investors and also not foreign investors that when there's any small thing, they said now, you can see that the market is a bit stable and we are still making money in this same market. That's why the oscillation, for me, I believe that once the G, uh, G, uh, G20 that now they are meeting very soon, they have they have to also broke up peace between uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine. He said, Ukraine and Russia, Russia is on the offer and gaining, why Ukraine will suffer. But I believe that globally, a part of what is happening in Ukraine is you know, being, uh, being fed by every part of the world. But I believe that once it starts subsiding, it will be another turn around the gate. For me, Nigeria economy will also recover if we put the right policy, not only looking at uh, what is happening outside the shore of Nigeria. If you look at and it, the right persons. If, if, the, if, the, if we look inward and see that we can make people what we have, sectors that we know that we can use to cover, because I, 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 I believe that if we do our Africa sector very well, you no, know, we're going to get benefit from it. And also, we're seeing that globally, the digital economy is what is happening. Are we encouraging our students? Are we encouraging people to go into that space? I think that this is all we do to impact our economy. There's no cause for us to fight on this platform, but this platform is purely for investment education so that at the end of the day, we make wise decisions and also impact our bottom line. But if we have an idea to share on how to make that money, we are free to share with us. We are not here to promote anybody or any political party, but purely to address the issue that you as an investor, that's why the uncertainty in the environment, how can you make money? That is the key. Because in that midst of uncertainties, there's opportunity. Kind of opportunity to make money and go there is your own. For me, you know, whoever that comes on board is good for Nigeria. That's what Nigeria wants. But how can I take advantage of their policy and what is happening to me? Ambrose. Ambrose. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, uh, I just want to comment this, way, please. Uh, great investors. Uh, it's very obvious that there is interplay between the economy and the markets. And we as investors, we are in the market. And whenever there is interplay between economy and the market, you expect to see ups and downs. These ups and downs sometimes have to do with sociology, economy, politics, and so many other things. If you, as an investor in the market, what you are focused is the interplay between price and value. Yeah. If you are paying a price, is it worth the value you are getting? So now as an investor, if you are in the market, you see that, okay, uh, the market, is it overpriced? Look at the price any ratio of your market. The price earning ratio of Nigerian stock market is around 10.6, the PE very, ratio. Very cheap, yeah. The frontier PE ratio, it's about 12.6. The imagine market is about 10.6. So you can see your market is not overvalued. Yeah. And when your market is not overvalued, you have something to look at. In most cases, when you have crisis, you can have a situation where you have overvalued market and the market is contaminated and the economy is contaminated, you have economic crisis. Now we have a situation in Nigerian market where the market is not overvalued. So the securities, the assets are not contaminated. It's only the economy that is coming to contaminate your market. These are all the problems you see around high cost of production, high unemployment, high inflation and everything. So what you should be focused as an investor is this. Mistakes are going to be made or have already been made. Balu has been destroyed. Where are you going to stay that this Balu can be recovered after this crisis? Look for companies that are very durable. Look for companies that have resilience in them. 
invest in them and stay. After some time, the crisis will go away and those companies have agility to be the first to run ahead of others. And your position on them, how do you identify them? Look for companies that have good cash flow. Look for companies that have good payouts because equities can help you when prices are down by paying you a good dividend yield. So I encourage our investors to look at the problems, but to look at the opportunities. Our market is not overvalued, but you need to position yourself very well to know on which stocks are you going to remain during the crisis and out of the crisis. Crisis all throughout history, if you look at the human time, crisis have been around. Risk has been around, but it did not stop us from investing. From the time when human beings started going out to look for food, they test risk on the, on the bush, they fight with animals, they hunt, but they still come back uh, stomach full. Yeah. So please, I urge our investors to focus on the opportunities in the markets, look for companies that are very durable to, to all these problems you see and they have the resilience to come out. Balu is going to be destroyed, but you can recover. Thank you very much for giving me time to talk to you, please. Thank you very much. Where's Thank you very much, Sam Sudin, Sani. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for that comment. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Aus, are you not with that? Yeah, we are not positioned here. We are here to present uh, Yes. You are, you are right, Mr. Ambrose. So, you are right, Mr. Ambrose. Ambrose, let me ask about yeah, my stocks, I'm please. I'm not what is going on with let, me? Let, let, let me let me put what I observe. Okay. Please, uh, I think Nigeria we are edging towards an expanded economy. Okay. If you look at us, we've been in the comfort region for long. An expanded economy is the kind of economy we see in the UK, US. And we're, we're, we're towards that now. You see a lot of people having money, but they can't really do any business. I advise people, people that are already established, it's easier for them. It's easy for me to put money in a GT bank and give me a return of 10, uh, more than 10% a profit in a year. But it's very put money myself to do business here in Nigeria and get such money. So what we advise people is to, by the time we all are players in the stock market, things will happen, it will move the market. There's nothing we can do. We're heading towards an expanded economy. There's nothing anyone can do about it. It's, it's going to be stiff and tough. Just as if it's tougher out there, but they always find a way out to buttress it. Government can't do anything for us all the time. We need to do something for ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is good. Yes, any other question or addition? For our time is fast spent so that we can continue so that we can round up for any other addition. Go ahead. Hello, Ambrose. Likely stock. Hello, Ambrose. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yes, with, the, with this um, gaining of um, Etel on Friday, are we expecting anything good from MTA? That, 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 as an investor, that should tell you are not so, okay, um, that should tell you what they expect, but I will explain that later before we round up for the day. Yes, uh, I can see hand up, no? Mr. Bola, your hand is up, ma. And where are you, ma? Yeah. Uh, okay, it's a very interesting uh, session this afternoon, and uh, I like the reaction. But what I just wanted to ask, um, we are we as investors are losing the value of our hard earned resources that is being put into the capital market and i uh, my question is around where and what is the role of the sector regulator because uh, i will cite an example with mtn and to be honest this is a very privileged uh, information MTN declared a turnover of, I can't remember the exact figure again now. It's in trillion, it's about seven point something trillion. Mm -hmm. Around the and the, if you know it, please, Mr. Ambrose, you can tell us. And out of that turnover they declared last year, they said their cost of operation is almost 90%. And my question, 
as a layman. I'm not a technology person. My question is, how come a company that is not procuring license, is not investing in new infrastructures, is not even, is outsourced some of his co-location infrastructures. So he kind of have HIS running those for him. IHS, ma, IHS. I, IHS, and he's still claiming to be running an operation cost in the tune of almost 90%. And we know that this company expand and they, are the, they have the largest uh, consumption and market share among the telcos. So when we are asking this question and people are reacting, I think it's normal because it means we are getting closer to our realities because before we close, we just wait for whatever they throw at us and we don't ask questions. But I think we're getting close to knowing what is really happening beyond just buying these invisibles. We need to start asking the right questions and taking the right action because I think this problem is stemming from corporate governance and weak oversight from the appropriate quotas. Be it any sectors, they all have sector regulators and we need to start asking questions to the people that oversight them. Maybe using the public uh, medium of social media, newspapers and start raising a campaign asking some sponsored editorials can also go a long way to help us to, uh, because if you write them, they will never reply you. They will not acknowledge your letter. So, but if you invite them to a public editorial and there are responses on, on Naira land, I think there will be answers to some of our questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to, very much, Ma. To add to, uh, no, thank you. I've just said now. Thank, thank you, th thank you, madam. Thank you, ma. What, to add to what I just said now, you know that is why uh, I emphasize the listener that as an investor, you are not just being carried away by price is going up or going down. You know when you are buying value or when we are just buying carcass. We saw what happened in one day. Today, there are companies that were saying that because they settle where they operate and where they are going, there is value and there is future for them. For that, as an investor, every investment is against the future against tomorrow. You know company that is set up institutions are going to put their performance turn around because of either policy or what is happening around, these are how to invest. We don't enter a stock or a sector that you know that they are struggling. And see you know, that the, the banking sector as you speak, you no, know, we don't see result that is too you know impressive from them. But we see that now that we have seen a rate hike and from your two today going to the future, we see that so that will drive their price, drive their performance. Don't like what I was just saying about the, the cost of a product like, economy. It's not the make of the companies that we are just seeing now. It's the make of the value. If the cost is also it will reflect. So like uh, MTM, Madam just mentioned now, MTM you no know, about almost a uh, you no know, trillion above. It's not different from others that we are seeing also also in the like uh, this uh, unit. But their top line was up.
who are in the market to make money, not to know the name of the company or the MD, who are there to make money. Anywhere in the world, stock market is to what is to create wealth. It creates wealth for those that know how to play. That's why I say call a capitalist market because if you understand how to play it, it will help you. Most rich men in the world today, they are all players in the capital market. They understand the, the benefit of playing the market. But let us now use us, we minority shareholders or pretty shareholders as a, no, uh, uh, as a, those people that are just uh, come and go invest us. No, we understand what we are sure we are sharing knowledge that we can invest with knowledge and with understanding. I think what Madam just shared is all we need to do. Let's also work together as a team. Anything that you know that we can do together, share and let us uh, know. You can call me on one on one, then we talk, and I can come over here and call attention of people that also look in that way and see what we can achieve from our discussion. Thank you very much. Another hand is up. You know, I have other two hands that is up here. Ayuma. Ayuma. Hello, Ambrose. Ayuma, give back here. Uh, Ambrose, hand. please. Ayuma, okay. Hello. This are you, man. Okay, right. Yeah, like what Madame raised, uh, I'm not making excuses for anybody, but if you are doing into call business, especially this year, you will be, you will want to agree with me that the cost of doing business in the year now is is increasing almost every day. Please, we are not making excuses for them, but that is the reality of what's on ground now. Price of diesel has gone up, and it's the multiplying effect of on almost every other thing you are buying to run your business. So we should factor that into when we are making an investment decision. Yeah. So for every company you know you are, you are investing in and you know that they will they will be running overhead costs, please always factor this into it. Okay. You may you may look it from outside that uh, okay, it's not only diesel, yes, but when you check in detail. It affects everything. The tax people will come, they will pay you. They, you, you. I mean, you will pay them. Almost everything will be affected. So let's have this at the back of our mind that the cost of doing business in Nigeria is on the increase. The Thank government you. is not helping us, policy makers are not helping us. And at the end of the day, they don't have, they don't have the, uh, how will I put it now? Their hands are tight. Thank you. Fine, very yes, you may not make excuse for them. If we discover that the cost is much, yes, we can raise eyebrow, but then let's know that it's a reality, please. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well. Mr. Dairo, go ahead. Before yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Ambrose. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether Alagi is in the house. No, Alagi is not in the house today. Uh, where? Let me, let me make it a public question. Okay. Is there a way that we can Hello, uh, I'm not hearing you. Sir. I'm not when hearing you. Sir. Can I go on? Yeah, yeah, I say, you know, the, the regulators, the regulators, there is a way we can punish them too and let them feel the impact of we that they are investing. Because if we are not investing, some of them will not be there. Yes. And even those management of, our, of the companies, is there a way we can make it so that they may not receive their own salary if they don't perform? <laughs> because because I saw a list. I saw a list of the highest paid managing directors in some of the about 10 companies. Hello? Go ahead, I'm with you. Go ahead, I'm hearing. Hello. Uh -huh. The highest paid managing director, if that managing director loses his salary for one year, let us see how he's going to be. Let us see how. Majority of our people, they don't do their job, even when they are good uh, regulations. Okay, Hello. Okay, sir. Hello. Okay, sir. Hello. I you. Hello. So, I know that's, that's the more reason why. Why some people, especially those who are in civil service, they behave like say they are team God over everything. So when a law is passed, they don't they don't implement it to the letter, and that is where the problem is. Okay, sir. Thank you. So I I think I think it's high time to confront them. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. You know, just let me just give you a simple answer and also how we can go about it. You know, mm -hmm. a, in, a, in an advanced country, 
before most of the the big companies share their profit, at times the investors give them target that if you can move the share price or no of a stock to the other, they know that it as a lot of performance. If you can move it from one dollar to five dollar, we increase your rate, uh, your salary, we can give you bonus. They do that in our but here we don't challenge our managers, we only feed from them because in the nature we put ourselves as investors. Let our shareholders have everything, uh, associations and have everything. Yeah, that, so, that, that is what they want to do. It's just a little mm -hmm. if, if, we, if we challenge them, they will know that you know what they are doing, what we're doing. Do that. Serious. Okay, Mr. Gibbard, so that we can run for serious. Okay, Mr. Gibbard, so that we can run for Hello, Mr. Ambrose. I want I quite appreciate uh, all what you have said and all what other speakers have said also. And um, I also want to throw in the line of Madam and as regards um, taking up the regulators vis-a-vis -vis the management team as regards our company. Yes. But one thing I've majorly uh, come to understand and come to see in the market is that most times, uh, in as much as we have regulators in the market, there is this all over oversight functions. Apart from these regulators, you know, charging, uh, penalizing most of these companies, collecting huge amount, amount of money from them. Most of this money collected from them can be used as a turnaround in terms of training of some of these companies, which are defective in terms of performance. And I think um, most of the time, also, the, regarding the uh, shareholders association, most of us at times, you know, take all these issues up with some of these companies and you know, the type of system we run here, we don't really, uh, nobody is uh, held accountable for some of these mistakes. And because some of these directors are so called friendly with some of these uh, regulators, they become so powerful at times, you know, to, to do anything otherwise. And I think we should, just like Madame also suggests, that we should form a strong team to also, you know, make sure that we hold people responsible for their action. And I think that is the only way some of these companies can be made to perform. Thank you. Thank you very much. I agree with you. That's why I said, it's we that you know, we know our right, we let them know. But they take us as right. right. Now that we are waking up, I think we'll start working toward that direction. It's our shareholder association has before now has you no know, kind of uh, you know, see them as investors that will come to beg them. That's why when they are doing anything, they see some of uh, the shareholder association and everything die off like that. No. Now that we are seeing uh, intelligent investors, sophisticated investors now, I think we'll start uh, raising uh, our voice so that you start hearing us. It's very, very important. Very Ambrose. Good, sir. good afternoon, and good afternoon, the whole house. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, I've kept quiet to listen to people, and I'm very, very happy. Until you get very mad at certain situations and circumstances, you will keep on enduring it. Uh, I think probably we are coming to the end of our endurance. So we are beginning to feel very, very angry. And anger at times will be a very positive emotion if it drives you to change those things that you don't like or those things that are holding you back. I think both our leaders in terms of political elites, as well as our regulators, or even our managers, our corporate managers, people that we have entrusted our investment with, they take us for a ride because they know that we are very, very two-sided. They think that they are the owners of the economy, they think they are the owners of the Arakata, they think they are the owners of Nigeria, and they do anything and they go unchallenged. Let me give you one example with the regulator. On the 28th of December, when most businesses have closed down and they have gone home, SEC went ahead and changed all the fees payable by all segments of the capital markets. If you want to have a license for uh, asset management, for example, you used to pay 500,000 Naira. Said change it from 500,000 Naira to 10 million. Everybody kept quiet. By what stretch of imagination do you calculate that level of percentage increment in an economy like ours? 
Now all companies are doing proxy AGM. Let me say most companies are doing AGM by proxies. Before you pay 5,000 5, Naira for proxy forms, 5,000 Naira or 50,000 Naira. And SEC has moved it to 500,000 Naira. It affects all our companies. Everybody is keeping quiet. They've increased all fees across the entire market in an outrageous manner. And if we are in business to make money, then somebody somewhere has to pass that cost to somebody else. So the problem is not even only about diesel. But diesel is there, diesel is very obvious. Uh, you've seen Mr. Biggs closing down because they said 40% of their cost is on power. You've seen tantalizer going moribund. You've seen Swiss sensation. You've seen a lot of these eateries. They can't cope. Now that this is even going up and up, a lot of them will continue to shut down. Even banks are beginning to adjust their working hours because of the cost of diesel. So this is there. But there's also the way the regulators have turned themselves to you know, what they call calo calo. You know, people that just you know, machine that swallow money. And once you appoint somebody into a position, he thinks that, oh, you have given him a ticket to become a billionaire overnight. And this is the same government that will say they want his of doing business. And I get mad at that. Because I say one thing and you are doing exactly the opposite. The opposite. Hmm. Yes. So I believe strongly that when we, and I mean all of us on this platform, get very angry with the system, we demand a change. And it is only then that a change can truly come. I'll give you an example of a company that I know very well. They are CEO or whatever, the tenure of their premises has elapsed. And they want it renewed from Lagos state government. The premises, the land, uh, whatever. Land at, land and is. Lagos state government is asking them to pay 521 million Naira. 521, that's more than half a billion, just because the tenure of the CFO has elapsed and they are just going to renew it. They are not buying the land anew. How, 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 how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you get over, how do you wrap your head around that kind of a thing? Well, you know what? Everybody will keep quiet. So it is the day the Sri Lankan stood up that their oppression ended. So it is the day we stand up and say, no, this cannot continue. That is the day our oppression will also end. So I want to challenge everybody. Forget about shareholders association. Refrax who didn't know what to do to survive have hijacked that process and they've been set to big time and now they are part of that system. They can't challenge the system. They can't challenge the system. I'll tell you the truth. But if individual investors who have not dipped their own hands into the cookie jar says, look, this is my honest earnings and I need to protect my investments. If they stand up, if they speak, I think we are likely to have a change. Thank you very much. What is this now? Thank you very much. Sir. I'll report it to Daddy. Thank, thank, you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Any other one on this note we are for only today? For today. Uh, hello, Oga Ambrose. Somebody asked a question about MTN. But can it go the way of uh, Airtel too? You have not responded. I actually immediately asked. I said yes, it's possible because we are going through digital economy already anywhere and everywhere in the world. For that, it's very high. It will go in the same direction. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, we want to call it a day for today, but before we go, let somebody pray for us. Ah, uh, Ambrose, before we pray. Hello? Go ahead. No stop for today. Any stock for today? For today, we are taking position ahead of the earnings. We are not buying stock now. We are the number two. We are not buying the market. I've taught you that you don't buy, you know, we're already in the position that you don't buy. Yet. I've looked at some stocks. Those stocks were already in them. That's why I'm not going to repeat them. Already in them, but they're not about to be the market. Yeah. Hello? Are you there? 
That's yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. I said there are no stock to buy to They have some there, but we're already in those stocks. So I wanted to see their number. That's why I said to enter position before the number in the market. That's why I said to enter next week. I wanted to see the numbers as of next week and market uh, direction. We are not buying new positions already in those stocks now. Let's just watch and see. The and also, we gave you stop loss in all your position. Once the result come, you didn't hit the target, you're quickly to sell off and move to another one. The rally, fine, because the market goes up and down. But let's see the results first. Now we've seen the Unilever, we want to expect more to start the market from next week. Let's wait and see those numbers, because we're already positioned ahead of the number. We don't buy stock when the numbers are hitting the market. Just wait and see when to see where the number will go and hit the market. And market reaction. Don't forget that any season, I always say that the time for what momentum, liquidity, for those that are positioned, if you are buying at that time, nobody is coming, you are not going nowhere. But those that have entered at lower prices are going to enjoy when price comes and the heat expectation and start running up good. But for now, today, no talk for today. We want to watch the ones who have already positioned before now. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ambrose, can you please give us uh, uh, the history of release dates for Q2 for most of these stocks? Well, we've discussed the release date before now in this class. And also, I've, I've shared it on the on the platform too. Sir, can one still buy UPDP at one twenty? Um, for me, it's still a good buy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Let somebody in the house pray for us. No, a Christian sister pray for us when we are starting. I would love a Christian sister or a brother, a Muslim brother or sister to run down for us, for us to call it a day. Yeah. Also, do that, I think, advantage of the, the extended uh, date for the discount. I think I see some still paying uh, yesterday, still on you know, Wednesday, 20th of uh, July. If you are still interested in taking some product, you are very free to still make your payment. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Rahman rahim. Malik yawmiddin. Ya kana abul kuna astahim bin nasran tamsakin. Suranta allazina lam ta'alayhim gir maghdubi alayhim wad Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your weekend. See you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambrose. Have a very wonderful week. Thank you, sir. And God Thank bless you. everybody on this platform. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ambrose. Thank you, sir.